back to another episode of moto gp mac and today we're going to talk about nea bastanini and the pretty tough season that he's had so far now look as we know bastanini was probably one of the main figures last year in the moto gp season that really did shine like a diamond in the goat's ass he was absolutely mega but then at other races he was only okay. And this was probably one of the concerns for me about him was that there wasn't the consistency. But when we look at what's happened this season, you know, okay, the injury that he had after Portugal, you know, for sure has 100% knocked him. He's lost an awful lot of riding time. And if you look at Peko in that time, Peko seemed to get his bike sorted to the way he wanted to. It did take him a couple of races. But we also have to remember that Bastanini jumped off of a GP21 hybrid. It had everything except the engine the versions. But I don't believe the Ducati has overly changed. But speaking a couple of weeks ago... Chibati was saying, you know, that Enya hasn't really found the base setting or he's not really comfortable to ride the bike. And I suppose when you look at MotoGP, everything is now within a second, really. So a second and you could be fighting for 14th or, or 15th or 16th place. So like he is not far off, but he is not what I would class as performing as expected as expected really he did perform okay in the in the last weekend's grand prix but again you know if your teammate is winning you need to be up there also now i will also say i don't think his seat is under threat and um, if this continues into the 2024 season absolutely 100 percent, he will be removed from the factory team you know, and Ducati's sweetheart, should they get to own his contract, Marco Vesecchi, then I definitely do think he is under threat anyway for 2025 season to be in the factory team. I do think that Ducati would want to put Pecco and Marco in the same team. Now, it's also definitely showing, I suppose, his lack of experience in MotoGP, and I say that respectfully, you know, he was on the GP21. He made that jump. And this is something that I talked about for Bisecki as well. You know, currently Bisecki is on a very well sorted GP22. He doesn't really have to do too much. Okay, the tires will change slightly, but they can engineer slightly to that. Whereas with the GP23, you know, that bike was a new bike. There was no data. There was baseline data off the 22, but the 23 was slightly different. So again is he finding it difficult to find his way on a bike where there is no data and is that experience coming back now or inexperience i should say coming back to bite him a little bit that he can find the right direction for him you know and is this a reason that Baseki should actually just turn around and stay in vr46 but overall i suppose the beast is not being a beast this year you know he's had the injury I think Ducati have mostly written off this year to help him get back to full fitness and have a good crack at it next year. But I definitely think, Joe, he needs to start showing some good results or going in the right direction for himself to gain the confidence to go into 2024 back at his old self, the old beast, delivering the results that we all kind of expected out of him. But I definitely love to know your thoughts. What do you think is going on with the beast? Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll be back again tomorrow with another video.